Uh, it's fun to have fun in church, amen? And so we need to make sure that we're having fun, and you need to develop relationships with people in this church. The people that are standing around you, don't leave today without making yourself known to them. Uh, you, they could be the, the answer to your prayers. They could be an opportunity for you to experience God in a new and enlightening way that is far beyond what you could ever ask or hope or think, amen? Because it's so cool, even though that we didn't call people up and we didn't lay hands on people, that it's so important for us to recognize that God has joined us together as a body of believers and the people that are around you are not an accident. Amen. And so it's so important to develop relationships because what part of God is on the inside of you. And if part of God's on the inside of you, then part of God's on the inside of somebody else. And that may be the divine relationship that you need to see some breakthroughs in your life. Amen. So get to know somebody before the service is over or before you leave today after we close out. I want to continue what Pastor Justin's been talking about in the area of righteousness. We don't want to, God doesn't miss a beat. God's going to, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. What's really been big on the inside of me, and I love it because when you're ever you're doing what it is that God's told you to do, you're going to see things come together in a supernatural way. And I want to talk to you about how to cultivate your relationship with God, your righteousness with God, cultivating your righteousness with God. Because one of the things we've heard, you have got to be convinced that it is God's will for you to be the righteousness of him in Christ Jesus. Amen. Your, Pastor Justin has been ministering this to us, helping us to understand that we are, say I am, I am. the righteousness, the righteousness. Of, God of God in Christ Jesus. Now, how do you cultivate, is the question that I have for you this day. How do you cultivate the knowing that's on the inside of you that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? Because the truth known is sometimes you don't feel like it. There's some days that you wake up and you wish you probably never even gave your life to Jesus, but you're glad you did. Amen? <laughs> Seriously, come on. Be real about it. There are thoughts that come to you and you're, you're looking at your situation and saying, how am I going to get through it? And, and you, having an understanding and having the ability to cultivate that what's on the inside of you because it's already on the inside of you. Amen? Jesus is on the inside. When you ask Jesus to come into your heart, he was made into us wisdom and righteousness. Amen. So the righteousness of God is already on the inside of us. But how come you don't feel that way all the time? And it's a lot of what Pastor Trey was actually talking to us about, about that seed that's on the inside of us. And what are you doing with the seed that's been planted on the inside of you? Because Jesus is the incorruptible seed. Jesus is the incorruptible seed. He is the written word. So when you get a word like the tithes and offerings that Trey was just ministering in, there's a seed that's been planted on the inside of you. But how do you cultivate it to the point that you are seeing the windows of heaven open up, pouring you out a blessing? There's not room enough to receive it. How do you cultivate it to the point that you see giving back unto you a good measure pressed down? You need to understand it's the same way where your righteousness is concerned. There's a process involved in what we receive and who we are in Christ Jesus. There's a process involved in that. You know what it's called? The just shall live by faith. The righteous shall live by what? Faith. Pastor Justin's been ministering this to us. You got to understand this. Well, how does faith work? Because I think a lot of times we're word of faith people. I'm so blessed and so honored, thankful to God that he's connected me with the word of faith. Amen. Because that's the gospel that we preach, amen? But what is that word of faith? How does that faith work in our lives? And I think a lot of times people have called us a name it and claim it group. Uh, you know, come on. That we're just constantly speaking. We're just thinking that we're going to have everything we say. Yes, we do, amen? So, but the reality of the process of getting to the point that what you're speaking coming out of your mouth is coming to pass is a process, and if you, if, you don't, if you get lost in the process, you may never see the harvest that you're looking for on the other side of that. Yes. And we've got to learn how to cultivate the seed, the incorruptible seed that won't return void, that'll do what it's set out to do. We've got to become good at cultivating and developing that in our lives. Right. We're the ones, if it's going to be, it's up to me. Some of you know it, youth, you better jump in on that over here. If it's going to be what? It's up to me. There's a, the, Jesus has already done everything that he's going to do. He's handed the baton out to me and you. And he said, hey, man, you can do this, but it's by faith. And you know what's so cool? I'm giving you the faith. Yes. Now, all you have to do is cultivate the faith that I've given you on the inside. Because all of us have the same amount of muscles. Yeah. Really, seriously, you do. Just some are bigger than others. <laughs> and some don't look like they're even there. Okay, but they are there. 
It's so important for you to remember that. They are there. You may not have ever seen them do anything or, or fail them do anything. There's something. You ever go do something that you haven't done before and you realize, man, I've got, man, ow, why am I sore there? That's a muscle, okay, that you haven't worked before. And that's sometimes the way the word of God is. You get something preached to and you're like, oh, ouch, oh, oh, what is that? You know, that's a muscle. That's a spiritual muscle that God's trying to grow on the inside of you so that you can produce something in your life. Amen. And what Pastor Justin, he's been kicking over some stinking thinking in our lives so that we can understand who we are in Christ Jesus and we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. But if you're not so, you're not strong in this, you may, you got to realize there's a goosebump piece sitting out the side of these doors. Come on. Yeah, you feel like, man, you can do anything when you're sitting in church. Ah, give it to me. Huh, you know, do what you have to do, you know. But the reality of it is, is that even though you may be strong when there's a corporate anointing in her like this, when you walk out the doors, you've got to take this on for yourself. Yeah. Amen. I have to do this myself. I can't live on borrowed, on borrowed testimonies. Yeah. I need to have a testimony of my own, and I need to understand how to cultivate that testimony for myself. And so I want us to look at some scriptures, real familiar scriptures this morning, but I want to look at it in a little bit of a different perspective. Because a lot of times the name it and claim it, that kind of saying that people say that we are, you have to understand the part of the process where your words are concerned coming out of your mouth. It's not just, the, and Pastor Justin said it a few weeks ago, it's when you get to the point that it's so deep on the inside that then all of a sudden it becomes authoritative and you begin to, re, and things start happening for you. How do you get to that point in your life? Yeah. And here's the thing, they're, they're two in the same. Okay, we're going to look at this this morning how your words are affecting your future, your presence, and everything else that you'll do in your life. You and I have got to get better at cultivating the words that are coming out of our mouth, but also cultivating the harvest that's supposed to be with the words that are coming out of our mouth. There's a process here, amen? Let's look at something, and we're going to just use some scripture to establish this here. Let's go to uh, Matthew. I want this a foundation scripture. Chapter 12. Everybody's familiar with Mark 11, 23, 24, if you're in the word of faith, because of Kenneth Hagin, amen? Praise God for Kenneth E. Hagin. And I like this because these two, this area of scripture deals it from Matthew's point of view, not from Mark's point of view. And I think it's really neat. It's something that I've been drawn to in my whole entire ministry life where the word of faith is concerned is understanding that I will be held accountable for every idle word that's spoken out of my mouth. And, uh, you know, it's a deep way to think of things, but here's, let's read this together. In Matthew 12, 33, it says, either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by his fruit. So if there's, any, if there's nothing happening in your life where the word of God is concerned, where your confession is concerned, then you, you need to evaluate yourself and find out where, what's going on with your tree. Amen? You, you want to be producing Look in verse 35, a good man, and Trey mentioned this a while ago, a good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by your words you shall be justified. Just as if I never sinned, just like Pastor Justin's been teaching us, by your words, you shall be righteous. By, by your words, you're going to stand in the righteousness that God has made you, whether you feel like it or not. By whose words? Say my words. My words. It's important. We got to do this. Work this muscle this morning with me, okay? All right. By, the, by thy words, you shall be justified. By your words, you shall be condemned. Okay, let's go into Matthew chapter 13, because I want to see, and I'm going to skip around a few verses here, but I want you to see this. Because right after that, this is a continuation, just because it's 12 and 13 doesn't mean that Jesus stopped the thought. Right. He's still ministering on the same subject of words, right? right? So here he goes, and he starts talking about some of the parables that are similar to the ones in Mark chapter 11, the seed time and harvest time situation. Okay, we got to see this. And he spake many things, verse 3 of 13, and he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. Now go to verse 10 through 11. 
Because then he comes back and he's, the disciples have been asking him questions. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speaketh unto us in parables? He answered and said to them, Because it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Why is that important? Because Jesus taught his disciples. He said, this is how you should pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, and then, then people say, well, you never know. What, no, that's a mystery to people that don't have a revelation of who Jesus is and who the Holy Spirit is in their life in order to reveal the mysteries that God has laid up for us, not from us. Okay, hang, hang with me here because it, it all revolves around the words that are coming in and out of your life on a regular basis and eventually even out of your own mouth. The mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. If we're going to have heaven on earth, we need to know these mysteries. Amen? Right. But to them it is not given. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Verse 19, it says, When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. Where is it sown? In your heart. Okay, the word of God has got to be, when you ask Jesus, you didn't ask Jesus into your head. You asked Jesus into your heart. You got to understand that you're the soil that God, that's going to produce the harvest that you're looking for. Come on. I say, I'm the soil that is going to produce the harvest of the word of God. Amen. It's going to produce it, it, it doesn't know anything else to do but to grow. That's right, yeah. But it has to be planted in good soil. Say, I'm good soil. I'm good soil. All right. That, this is he which receives seed by the wayside. Now, verse 23 through 24, it says, But he that receives seed into good ground, say, I'm good ground, I'm good ground. is he that heareth the word and understandeth it. Okay, so you know, here's, the, here's important because a lot of times, well, I don't understand it. Understand. Get wisdom, get understanding. With all you're getting, get understanding. See, you know, you've got to see this. The people, it says in Psalms 103, the people saw the things of God. Have you seen somebody, do you know somebody personally that has been healed before? All right, have you been healed before? Raise some hands. All right. So you, have an, you understand that, that, that healing exists, right? right? So there's an understanding there. So, so people, though, from the outside, they're looking at us, and they don't understand that. Yeah. Why? Because they don't have the person that, uh, that interprets the understanding, and that's God. Yeah. He doesn't want us to not know what he's doing on the face of the earth. See, the people saw the things of God. Moses understood the ways of God. And the ways of God is the word of God. Who, what, when, where, and how is what you need to know about faith. Who's your faith in? Come on. When did it get purchased? When is it going to come? Where? Where is it going to come from? How is it going to get there? Amen? Yeah, amen? You have to know these things. Yeah. Well, how are you going to know these things? Cultivate the word of God that's been poured into your heart. Yeah. You take that word. Let me tell you, there's something really neat about it. Because nobody knows how a seed really actually does all that it does. But if you'll keep planting that word of God, it'll begin to take root into your life. And all of a sudden, if you'll keep, and there's, here's important. I'm getting ahead of myself, and it's your fault. Because y'all want to know answers, and that's not fair. So just wait just a few more minutes. <laughs> Let's go through the rest of these scriptures here. Okay, but he that receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some a hundred. See, it's the person that understands it that's going to bring forth something. It's, it's like that scripture that says, well, the truth will set you free. No, the, the Bible says the truth you know 
will set you free. And that verb know is not a factual knowledge. You know who the president is, but you don't have a relationship with the president personally. You have a factual knowledge of who he is. But you can know and understand God because God wants to visit with you all the time. And if you'll pray and ask him, he'll reveal the secrets that you're looking for in your life. He's not, look, he's not hiding them from you. He's hiding them for you. They're for those that hunger, who, who hungers and thirsts for righteousness. Their right place, whether it's in your finances, whether it's in your healing, whether it's in your marriage, whether it's where your children are concerned. If you'll hunger and thirst for God, in those situations, he will reveal himself to you so you can understand them. Then you can have an end result that you're looking for according to the word of God. Yeah. Are you getting this? Yeah. Okay, so this person understands. Another parable put he forth, verse 24, unto them saying, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. It's another parable. A good man that planted seed in his field. Listen to this. Because you know what? You're planting seeds in the field of your heart all the time. Whether they're good seeds or bad seeds. And if you look that scripture up, it tells you, let the good and the bad grow together. We're going to find out which one's got more of it. Hello. And the good seed of the word of God is like good San Augustine grass. It eats up all the weeds. Come on. Seriously, if you water, if you water and do, do right, let sunlight come on San Augustine, it'll take care of all the weeds in your, in, your, in your grass. And this is no different with the word of God. Hallelujah. We're getting somewhere this morning. I'm excited. So we'll go to Mark chapter 4 for just a second because it says in, in verse 4, 26, chapter 4, verse 26 and 7. He said, so is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground. Same kind of. This is the same thing that we just read over there in Matthew. But I want you to see this in Mark chapter 4 here. As if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise day and night, and the seeds should bring forth and grow up, and he knoweth not how. I love what Brother Copeland says. Don't worry about how God's going to come by it, but he will come by it honestly. It's not your way. To, you don't have to try to figure those kind of things out. Your job is to cultivate the seed. I'm going to, I have all my needs met according to his riches and glory. Great is a piece of my children. Come on. Yeah. Those different seeds that I am cultivating and I am watering in my life on a regular basis. I got to keep looking into the light, the perfect light and the perfect law of liberty. Amen. So that I can continue to cultivate what's on the inside of me, bringing light to it, bringing water to it, refreshing, washing with the water by the word, as it says in Ephesians. What am I doing? I'm, cult I'm doing something with that seed that has been planted. It'll do. I don't know exactly naturally how it's going to come to pass. That's not my responsibility. My responsibility is to water it, feed it, nourish it, give it sunlight, continue to speak. I've got to do this on a regular basis. And how do you do this? You do this with the words of your mouth. Hold on. Let's, because that's Matthew chapter 12. We'll go back there in just a second just to highlight so he sees here, you don't, don't know how exactly how it's going to come to pass, but you can trust God. God is the source of what's going to take place. Matthew 13, 31 says this. Jump back over there. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven, the, I love that. He said it again. The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. Man, it grows up and it becomes a big one of the biggest trees, one of the biggest fruit trees. And so they can, what, birds of the air. So people can be blessed by what's going on in your life. Amen? Got to see this. And it all happens by the word of God. Now, here is what you, the, one of the things from the standpoint that I believe where I said it works two ways a while ago. Where the words coming out, coming out of your mouth work two ways. And I believe in, the, in a, a lot of people, and, and I'm, I'm just as guilty as anybody else. I'll raise both hands. But a lot of times, people are confessing, speaking, speaking, speaking out here when they need to be confessing, speaking, speaking in here. And you, you, come on now. What you, what you got to see here, and we're going to go to a couple of scriptures, a, pas a passage of scripture that will help you. For one, just remember that in Genesis chapter 8, it says, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest time will always be in effect. The word of the Lord won't return void. It'll do what it's set out to do, but you've got to water it. You have to tend to it in order for you to have a harvest. 
We're going to look at two passages of Scripture that I believe that if you'll grab a hold of this from the standpoint of not just your words making a, uh, making a statement out here for everybody to hear, but your words are also developing something on the inside of you that is going to manifest itself eventually out here. Because, you see, your heart, even though you may have heard that word and you've come to understand that word in some ways mentally, that word has still got to get so full on the inside of your heart that when we squeeze you, that's what comes out. So, and, and, and you can never, you and I, we cannot stop. I was telling Cassie this last night. I said, you know, one of the things I love about Jody Osteen is she kicked cancer and took it out. Yes. She took it out. But you know what she doesn't do? She doesn't go back to the way she used to do things. She still speaks healing over her body and takes her scriptures out and confesses them. Why? Because her heart is so full of healing, it'll never touch her body again. And what we said earlier, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. But you're going to be known by what, what fruit you're producing in your life. So if you're lacking something in your life, it's not that it's not in you already because you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It's that your heart hasn't become so full that it's overflowing in that area of your life to the point that everybody else can be refreshed by it. Because when you have a revelation of healing, what can you do? You can lay hands on somebody knowing there's an anointing that's on the inside of you that's going to be released, that's going to set that person free. Why? Because that word has been cultivated and you don't stop cultivating it. You can stop. Just be, It's real simple. Stop going to the gym for a few months. It all goes down. <laughs> And go on, bye-bye, see ya. Come on, reality, right? We're still working this muscle, right? It's a, and you, come on, dads. You talk to your, man, you should have seen, you know, you keep your old pictures out so your son can see what you used to look like. What's up with that? Where are you today? Come on, right? Come on, we need to be like, hey, man, this is a challenge right here because Pastor Justin has been really challenging us where uh, as men, we need to keep our bodies in check as well as our, as our families and our spiritual lives and everything else. So he's been encouraging us where this is concerned, right? We need to be the Joshua and the Caleb's at 85 years old where Caleb is sitting there. I'm as strong as I was the day I was 40, both for going out, for coming in, for war. Give me this mountain. I will take them out myself at 85 years old. Jump. You feeling froggy? Come on now. You got to see this. What does that come from? It came from a relationship, an intimacy. These two young men went against the grain when everybody else in, the Christ, in their denomination was going elsewhere. They hold fast to what God was saying to them because Moses, they trusted in the word that was coming out of him. And Joshua craved, and he's, you know, this is what's so cool about Joshua's. Moses was on top, talking to God for 40 days. Joshua was on that mountain with him, but he wasn't in the glory of God. That boy didn't eat for 40 days either. Then you know what? Moses walks down, gets mad at everybody, throws the tablets down, runs back up there, and you know what? He's up there for another 40 days. And the Bible says that Joshua, even after Moses left the tent, he stayed in there. He, prayed, he wanted he, he hungered and thirsts for God. And I'm telling you, there's some things in your life that you and I have just got to get real, get real about it and want it so much that I'm, I'm going to live my days in prosperity. And my latter days are going to be better than my former because I've got, a, I've got a God that lives for me and in me, and he is greater than anything that I'm going to face for, my, for eternity. And how are you going to develop this? You're going to continually do what Joshua did. Let's look at Joshua. Let's look at uh, Joshua chapter 1. Everybody's real familiar with this passage of Scripture. This is cultivating your righteousness, cultivating your right stand. Sickness does not have a right to be in your body. Hmm, it's a violation of heaven on earth. Come on. Nah, nah. Slap down, reset. That's what you need to tell you. I remember some of y'all here on Wednesday night. Slap it down. That's not, that's not God's will for my life, amen? That's not God's will for your life, Amen? But you're, you and I are the, if it's going to be what? It's up to me. If it's going to be what? It's up, to me. it's up to me. The buck stops here. Come on. Take an ownership. You want, you want to be blessed to be a blessing? Own it. Own it. 
All right, this is good. I love y'all. You guys are awesome this morning. Woo-hoo! Hallelujah. All right, so Joshua chapter 1. Let's start. Let's go through 6 through 8. I love this. He says, be, and I like this. This is a whole other message, but one I love preaching out of this. It's important to be before you do. That's right. And that's what Pastor Justin's trying to establish on the inside of us. You have too many Christians that don't know who they are in Christ Jesus trying to do Christ kind of things. And you'll be like the seven sons of Stephen. Y'all know what happened to them. Amen? Come on. So we, want, we don't want to be like that. We want to be what God's created us to be. And, and the word of the Lord to Joshua, this is God talking to Joshua right here. He says, be. I love that. Be. Be strong. Confident. I'm doing this in the Amplified. And of good courage. For you shall cause the people to inherit the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only you be strong and very courageous that you may do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Turn not from it from the right hand toward the left that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth but you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, then you will have good success, good, you will deal wisely and have good success. What is he telling us right here? He's saying be strong and courageous, but then he tells us how to be strong and courageous. Meditate in my word. Let this word come forth out of your mouth. Meditate. That word meditate, you go back to chewing the cud. That's a whole different aspect than what we think of meditation. Um, That is not meditation according to the word of God. The word of God has got to be replayed over and over and over by my mouth. He was telling Joshua that word meditate is to speak and to murmur continuously. You and I should be speaking this out. What did he train the people? He says, you need to teach this to the children. You need to do it when, you're, when you go to eat. You need to go when you go to sleep. You need to, what is he doing? He's trying to get this word so cultivated on the inside of him that there is nothing Joshua cannot do. Joshua, I have, I'm telling you, I have given you this land. Nobody could, nobody could get him off of his course in what God had said. God had spoken and he was standing on what God said no matter what one point something million people were saying to him outside that tent. And you and I have got to be that way too. But the only way that you and I are going to be that way is we've got to cultivate this. We've got to have to speak it continuously. It said that when the woman with the issue of the blood, I mean, yeah, was coming to Jesus. It says there, if you go look in the Hebrew, in the Hebrew language, it says, she kept, or the Greek, it says, she kept saying continuously, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, if I, she didn't just say it one time. What was she doing? She was building that confidence up on the inside of her. She's speaking this. She's speaking this. She's speaking this. And let me tell you, it wasn't out here. It was speaking to her. How many of y'all seen Star Wars? Uh, the last one that just came out. I know there's some geeks. I don't call them geeks, but they're Star Wars geeks. I'm a geek when it comes to Star Wars. It's really cool. Okay, now here's the reality of it is, is I love that when um, Poe and what's, uh, what's his name? Finn. They're walking out and Finn is taking him out and he's walking down and he's talking and he says, be calm, be calm, be calm. He says, I am calm. No, I'm talking to myself. Be calm. You know, seriously. <laughs> And sometimes we've got to do that with ourselves. What is he doing? He's developing it. I can't do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can't do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. His grace is sufficient for me. It's made perfect in my weakness. Come on. I go you therefore and teach all nations. Come on, me? Yeah, you. Because he commanded us all that believers, all believers should go you therefore. Amen. He's given us the ministry of reconciliation so we can reconcile the world unto him. Who's that? Me. Say me. Me. See, what what has to take place? You and I have got to constantly cultivate that. And one of the ways that we cultivate it is by speaking it into us just as much as we're trying to speak it out of us. And where I believe a lot of times the body of Christ has, has not had the success that they want is they've tried to produce a fruit before it was ready. Yeah. Come on. You got to see that. And so, and it's still there. Don't, don't. I love what Brother Keith Moore ministered to us at the minister's conference. If you were here, you can get the CDs, whatever else. But the reality of it is, don't let your faith stop at 1201. And a couple of weeks ago, uh, Captain Rex was in here preaching pretty much the same message. Don't let it stop. It's still in there. 
That seed doesn't, y'all remember that picture I showed a few months ago where that seed was coming through that brick? There was, a, there was some stuff. It was a brick wall coming out. And out of that brick wall was this little bitty green thing sprouting out. A seed doesn't know anything else but to do something. And that's grow. But you, you, but you and I cannot have that kind of a hard heart. We got to keep cultivating, allowing that seed to, to be germinated on the inside of us, to allow it to do its course. And part of that course is we got to continuously speak it out of our mouth. Continuously. And that's what he was instilling into Joshua. Joshua, you are called to take these people into the promised land. But you're going to have to do something, Joshua. You're going to have to meditate in my word day and night. You're going to have to speak this out continuously out of your mouth. I need you to be strong and courageous, but don't stop meditating on this word, Joshua. Uh, you can do whatever you want to do, but if you'll do, this, if you'll do this word and you'll do whatever the word is I'm telling you to do, you're going to have the success that you want. Yes. You're going to do this, Joshua. You're going to do this. Say, I'm going to do this. Do this. Say, I'm a doer of the word, a not a hearer only. All right, let me talk to you about uh, the four, four things about faith, okay? Because we're going we're to come back to this process in another scripture, but I need you to see this. Everybody knows this. This is real simple, but you can never, Brother Hagen used to say, keep the light switch of faith turned on. What does he mean by that? Is this should never stop in your life. When it stops, something else is feeding you. Words are always coming. Okay. So here's the process, look. Okay, number one, faith cometh by what? Hearing. Hearing. So what are you listening to all the time? You've got to see this. Because he says, hey, let them both grow together. The good seed and the bad seed. But you know who's putting it in there? If it's going to be what? It's up to me. You're letting the words come into your ears and into your heart. You and I are the ones that are allowing this to take place. We're the ones that have got to guard our hearts for out of it flow the issues of life. Right? And the Holy Spirit's there to guard it with you going, aunt, don't watch that. Aunt, don't listen to that. Aunt, turn that off. Ha, huh? come on, don't go to the break room today. You know what they're going to be talking about. Hello? Come on, right? Those, those things, you know what I'm saying? You're the one, you and I have got to protect what's, what we're hearing on a regular basis. And what he was saying to Joshua, Joshua, listen to me. Don't listen to anybody else. Joshua, pay attention to me. Listen to my words that are coming. You spend more time listening to me than you do to everybody else's negative talk right now. There's giants in the lands and we're grasshoppers in their sight. Because that's not what they were. That's what everybody was saying. Come on. And you, sometimes you allow the problem to get so big in your life because you're listening to what everybody else is saying that they become giants in your own land. And you know what? They're more afraid of you than you are of them. Because right. he is a defeated foe and you, he, God is waiting for you and I to get strong in him so that we can defeat that foe. Yes, yes. He's already been whooped. My little brother, brother, Dr. Savell said years ago, I can whoop somebody that's already been whooped. That's right. He, he gave this analogy. If you took a ball, and this is yours, a, a, a Louisville slugger, and you let somebody beat up Mike Tyson. I mean, just take him down. This is back when Mike Tyson was Mike Tyson. Okay? But just let him just take him out and beat him and, and to where all he can do is just barely breathe and he's laying there and everything is broken and everything else. And you said, hey, I'll give anybody a billion dollars to step in the ring with him and fight him right now. Everybody goes, yeah. 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 But not, not, when my, not on Mike's best day. And that's what Jesus did to Satan. We just got to stop letting him rule and reign in our lives. And what, the only way that you can do is you got to stop listening. And a lot of times it's just the devil. Yak, 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 talking smack to you. He's just a smack talker. You know, you know those guys, you show up to the gym, all they do is talk smack. They ain't got no game for nothing. You know what I'm saying? Come on, guys, y'all help me out there a little bit. And you just get tired of listening to them. They still talking after they got beat three times. Come on. Seriously, that's, that's, exactly, that's exactly what Satan is. Yeah. All right? And you can whoop somebody that's done been whooped. Amen? All right, so faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith calleth those things that be not as though they were. This is a quick little recap on faith. And you say, well, I've heard that. Faith cometh by hearing, not by what you've heard. <laughs> so your muscle, oops, excuse me, your muscle is going to develop because you lifted last year. Come on, right? It's real. That's it's, it's an easy analogy, correct? Amen? 
So we've got to do this. So faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. By the word of, man, th- you know, this is last couple of weeks, you know, we spend time studying and we listen. You know what? One of my favorite things to do is just go to sleep. I did it last night just with the word going through my ears. My wife will tell you that. I'll sit there with just, and it's just the New Testament on my iPhone. And it's just going all night long. You wake up the next morning and you find yourself in a whole different chapter in a whole different situation, but it's the word of God. The word of God will do what it's set out to do. We just need to do the word of God. All right? So faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Faith calls those things that be not as though they were. Faith worketh by love. Faith works, though. Be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. So the last one is you've got to activate that faith. Come on. I love this because, you know, those, those, those different passages of Scripture, when Jesus is talking to the disciples about seed time and harvest time, and he's talking about over, overflow of the mouth, the heart speaks, and so forth. You know what he does next? All right, boys, your turn. He pulls him in, and he sends him out. Yeah. You go lay hands on the sick. You cast out devil. He, that's what he did. He's like, because I can talk to you about this all day long, but you're the one, the rubber needs to meet the road. You're the one that's got to step out and do some things where this is concerned. By faith. Yes. By faith. None of those boys, they were fishermen, tax collectors. Come on, they were from all different kind of walks of life. They were not called, they didn't see themselves as ministers of the gospel. But here they've been spending this time, and I'm telling you, the more time you spend with Jesus, the bigger it gets on the inside of you. Give me somebody to lay hands on, Lord. Please send me somebody, Lord. I just want to lay hands on somebody, Lord. Please, Jesus. I want to be used by you, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Put me in, coach. Come on. Seriously. That's how it gets. You know, you want that promotion. You want, just give me the chance. Give me the chance. And that's what God, God's going to do that on the inside of you. Bless me so that I can be the blessing, Lord. What are you doing with what you got already? Come on, because we all have the same muscles. All have the same dollar. It's the same dollar. This is what are you going to do with that dollar? Okay, all right. So that's, that's so, so those four things. You get that? Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Faith calls those things that be not as though they were. Faith walketh, worketh by love. And faith without corresponding action is dead. Faith has to have action. So those four scriptures are Romans 10, 17. Romans 4, 17. Galatians 5.6, I'll repeat it, James 2.26. So Romans 10.17, Romans 4.17, Galatians 5.6, and James 2.26. Now, let's, let's, let's go right back because we're almost, we're almost I'm a wrap, fixing to wrap this up. But I don't want us to get away from what, the, 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 what I believe has got to t- take precedence in our lives as a body of believers right here. And that's the speaking that's coming out of our mouth going into our heart more. You cannot, I love this, Jesse DePlanet said this years ago, you cannot have what you speak against. And you believe more in what you say than what anybody else says. And when, when, and when things are going on, we can tell exactly where you are by what's coming out of your mouth. So your ma- my mouth has got to get better constantly. I've got to, if I want to be strong in the Lord and the power of his mind, if I want to do the exceedingly, if I want to see God do the exceedingly abundantly above all that I can ask or think through me, I'm going to have to continuously speak what the word of God says about me. I lay hands on the sick. I cast out devils. I speak with new tongues. If I drink any daily thing, it will not hurt us. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Set at liberty them that are breathed. To preach the acceptable year of your The day of vengeance. I've got to be speaking this out of my mouth. And you know what? When it comes time that someone needs a healing, needs to get set free, needs to get delivered, that God is going to say, hey, step up, boy. It's time. Let's do it. And it fall. It's easy. And that's you. That I'm the blessed. I'm blessed to be a blessing. I give and it is given unto me so that I can give unto others because God has given me the ability to get the wealth so that he can establish his covenant in me, through me, to the rest of the world. That great is the peace of my children because my children are taught of you, Lord. And I have a promise of my children's children for a thousand generations. What is that? That is the word of God over three different areas in my life. And it needs to be on the, continuously be on the inside of me. Just because I've walked in it, just because I'm living in it, doesn't mean that it's going to stay. If I stop working that out, it's, not, it's going to stop working. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you can't run that six-minute mile anymore. Amen? <laughs> Come on. Right? It's just reality, you know. 
But our weapons aren't carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down the strongholds. And our weapons of our warfare are the word of God. And we have, to, we have to continuously cultivate our relationship and our ability to use the Word of God in the way it was meant to be used. So let's go to Psalms chapter 1. This is where we'll focus our last bit of energy on. Psalms 1, and this is from the Amplified. This is, say, this is me. Say, say this is me. This is in me. What were you saying earlier, Trey? What were you saying earlier? Which thing? In. We're all in. Say, I'm all in this. Say, I am all in this. <laughs> Say, I'm blessed. I'm happy. I'm fortunate. I'm prosperous. I'm enviable. Ha, huh, that's you. Ha. Huh. Some of y'all are reading, I go, who? Who? What? Come on. But I'm telling you, you say it long enough, and you'll believe it. And when you believe it, it'll be. And you'll be strong and courageous, just like Joshua was. And you will take the promised land, your promised land, just like Joshua did. Look at this. I'm going to read the rest of it. It says, blessed, happy, fortunate, prosperous, to be envied is the man who walks and lives not in the council. Now, pay attention to this. Who walks and lives not in the counsel of the ungodly. That's that break room I was telling you about earlier. That's that news that you, that's that bad news, you know, that you've been listening to. See, the, I'm not going to say CNN, but you know, you know what I'm talking about. All right. So, um, <laughs> forgive me. So, but the reality of that is that it's not doing anything for you. That's not God talking. And, and so many people put more, and, and I'm not saying, so many people put more emphasis on what their doctor says about them than what God says about them. Change doctors, because there are godly doctors that will get in agreement with you about where your health is concerned. Hello? I don't, look for them. He who hungers and thirsts for his right place in God. Amen? God loves you. And the reality of it is your words are putting you in your right place or they're taking you out of your right place. And so are the words that you're hearing on a regular basis. And Psalm is making this very clear unto us. Okay. So keep going. Here we go. Following their advice. That's, I mean, we already know they're bad counsel, so why follow their advice? But believe me, people do this. Following their advice, their plans, and their purposes. Nor stand submissive, inactive, in the path where sinners walk. Hmm. Don't go there. Nor sits down to relax and rest where the scornful and the mockers gather. The coffee shop, the beauty parlor. <laughs> woo woo! Hallelujah! Hey! Seriously, that's, I mean, just come on. You go in, that's part of that break room th situation. Everybody's gonna talk about bad about the boss and how you're not doing people right and everything else like that. And you get into strife and division, and you know what? You may lose your job because when strife and division, every evil work is there. And you know what? A house divided against itself won't stand. So we'll be laying some people off real quick and you stay in that break room and keep arguing about what they're saying. And it could be you if you don't watch it. Say, that's not me. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. All right. I don't say, praise God. I'm just flowing here. Here we go. But his delight. Now, here's the, here's the key. My delight. Your delight. Say, this is my delight. I'm going to read this, and I'm going to read this, okay? And desire in the law of the Lord, and on his law, or on his word, the precepts and instructions, the teachings of God, I habitually meditate, ponder, study by day and by night. I shall be like a tree firmly planted and tended by the streams of water, ready to bring forth its fruit in its season. My leaf shall not wither, and whatever, everything that I do shall prosper and come to full maturity. I like what it says there in the King James Version. It says that you meditate in that word day and night. Yes. You meditate. It's the same exact thing that it says over there in Joshua. Right. He, this is no different. But it has the same result when you do. Yes. Isn't that cool? Yeah. That whatever you do is going to prosper. You're going to be that tree. That tree that Matthew is talking about over there. Right? Yeah. Well, Matthew talks about that tree producing fruit. Yeah. What fruit are you producing in your life? And Trey did that, boop, 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 you know. It's, you're going to be producing, something's going to be coming out. That's right. 
But it's got to go in before it can come out of you in order to produce on the outside what you're trying to receive that God's already purchased for you. Amen? You see that? Okay, so we're going to have to get steadfast where this is concerned. We're going to have to be consistent where this is concerned. Because you just can't be a one-day warrior. Right? Come on now. It's, and then you know what? You don't, you don't have to, you don't go into the gym. And uh, I'm not going to go into the gym and bench with Alejandro's benching. Because he's in there, man, all the time. And he's throwing up some serious weight, right? If I went in there and got underneath some of the weight that he gets underneath, I'm, that weight may go through me. Seriously, okay? So there, this is real important. You've got to recognize where you are right now, and it starts with the seed. Yeah. Find out what the Word of God is saying about you. Take notes on what Pastor Justin is preaching to us on a regular basis. Grab hold of it. Go through there. Highlight your Bible. Find out. Write some things down for you. Let God talk to you and minister to you that Word. That Word has got to become your revelation, just like it's become Pastor Justin's revelation or Trey or myself. Whatever I'm doing, I take it. I'm over here. Man, I... I'm listening to Pastor Justin or a while ago, even with Trey. I'm like, yeah, come on. That's good. And what is it doing? It's cultivating. I'm getting in agreement with it, with it so that it can continue to produce a harvest in my life. And that's what you and I have to do. We're the ones that are going to cultivate this. Amen? Say, if it's going to be, it's up to me. It's up to us. We have to cultivate. And, the, and one of the strongest ways that you're going to cultivate is the words that are coming out of your mouth. Guard your heart, for out of it flow the issues of life. And the way you guard it, in order for you to stand in the righteousness of God that God's already prayed for through Jesus Christ for us, is one of the greatest ways is going to be out of your mouth. Hold fast the profession of your faith. Hold fast. You hold on to it. Don't talk contrary to it. No, that's not me anymore. They try to remind you of your past, especially if it's Satan. And it is Satan, so just remind him of his future. Just let him know what's up. Dude, I'm going to live forever. In, the, in heaven, you're going to hell. It's hot. Come on. Reality, revelation hits you. Okay? It's important. I like, there's two shirts that I really like wearing. I got one that says, Satan is stupid. Thank you, Go Ministries. Hallelujah. All right? And I got another one that says, not today, Satan. Not to, no, no. Don't you come in here with that. Come on. Slap down, reset. Reset to what the word of God says about you, not what Satan's trying to tell you. And the way you do that is with your mouth. You resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Amen? Did you receive that this morning? Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus.